Hello viewer, welcome back to 54A. Um, simple turning today, still got a, quite a lump of ash left from when I did the ash collection. Um, so I'm just going to do a platter out of this. I want to keep it quite flat uh, because I'm going to put a pyrography picture on it. and uh, So I don't want anything too dish shaped. I want to keep it fairly flat. There will be a very slight uh, shape to it but nothing much. So what I've done is, if the camera will pick it up here, yeah, I've marked how big I want it is 8 inches. I've marked the centre off so it's over to the bandsaw and uh, start cutting at it. Right, I'm just going to drill a little hole where X marks a spot to put the pin in. Right, now I'll just get it set up on the circle cutting jig. Right, all set up. The, uh, the guide as low as I can get it, it's just an eighth of an inch or so off the wood so uh, we'll get this trimmed up Also I'm really pleased with this new bandsaw and uh, having a decent blade in it, I mean it cuts so thin, that is veneer, th veneer thin, that is absolutely incredible. So I can't complain about this bit of kit. Right, I should get it set up on the lathe now between centres and get a mortise in the end as I usually do. Nice little overhead shot for you there. So it's all set up between centres. I'm just going to make perfectly round ears. There's a little bit of a ridge where it came off the bandsaw, but uh, not to worry about that. I shall just get on with that now. a little bit more but I can turn the speed up a bit now right now this wood is a good two inches thick uh, it seems a shame to sort of just turn a lot of this away I'm just wondering if I could uh, keep the actual platter itself quite shallow but maybe put a bit of a foot on it so it stands sort of an inch off the surface I'll have a think about that while I'm resetting the camera right I'm just starting on the mortise now uh, what I didn't mention of course I had to make a tendon on the other end so I could get it in the jaws of the chuck to the mortise this end um, I should have used a, just a screw chuck really, I wouldn't have had to have all that hassle but to be honest I couldn't be bothered so <laughs> I'll just carry on with this mortise now Okay, that should be deep enough. Um, I'm going to put a slight shape on this now, like I say, nothing too special. Um, I think I've done away with the putting it on a foot idea. I just have a tiny little rim just to lift it off an eighth of an inch. And I'll just put a very slight shape on, on here. And then uh, 
dig out a load from the other side. That's where I want the little foot to be. Uh, I just took a, a line out with a pointed uh, diamond point carbide tip. That's it. A uh, very handy little tool to have for doing little things like this. Right, onwards and upwards. Just using a little 10mm round carbide cutter now to get in here just to shape it where the foot's going to be. That's got that shape there, so a little bit more work. Uh, just a slight dome in it, nothing, nothing fantastic. So I'll get on with that now, and then I'll turn it round uh, after I've sanded and polished round here. Right, I've just put the first coat of sanding sealant on now, and uh, I used to use a Scotch Brite pad for denibbing it, but I've gone over, I've worn it out. So I've gone over to 0000Y wool now, as a lot of turners use and recommend. So I'm, uh, that's what I'm going to use from now on. That seems good to me, so I'll now give it a second coat of sand and steel and do the same again with the Y wool. <clears throat> then give it two coats of Woodbacks 22. That's the first coat of Woodbax, so I'll just put another coat on now and then I'll turn it round. Well I couldn't bring myself just to throw all this wood away so I've started to uh, cut it in half with a thin parting tool. I might have to finish it off with a saw but I'll uh, get in as much as I can and uh, I'll have another blank then hopefully. It might not work. I've got it in quite a fair way, but I think I'll finish it off with a handsaw now. Well, that took a bit of doing, but at least I've got another bank. So I can get this one in the jaws of the chuck now. Okay, I've just got to take this off now and... Uh, so put a very shallow shape on it, hardly any dish in it at all, just to match the, the rear, the underneath of it. So uh, it's just uh, quite a simple job, I think. I'm not going to put anything fancy on it.
all right that's got that big lump out of the middle anyway and I'll just carry on with the scraper now I think See, I'm not even uh, putting a lip on it yet because I want it to go a little bit thinner before I put a bit of a just a bit of a lip on it, nothing nothing much. You can see now I'm just starting to put a little bit of a lip on it. I'm just stopping right before the edge, eighth of an inch before the edge, and then going back again. So uh, a little bit of chip out there, but that will probably get rid of that. A bit of sanding and what have you. So a little bit more shaping to do, and that'll be it. Oh yeah, nearly there now, it's nearly as thin as I want it. Just gonna tidy this edge up a little bit, take a little bit more out and then I'll uh, sand it down. Okay, that's sanded up to 600 now, which will give me a lovely surface to do a bit of pyrography on. So uh, no polish, no sanding sealant as yet. And uh, I'll get on and get the old gun heated up, I think. Right, that's all I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's um, a really complicated one, well it is for me anyway. A lot of shading and uh, it might work it might not work i might end up taking the bowl a bit thinner and getting rid of the uh, pyrography altogether but uh, i shall get on with it now right viewer um major catastrophe not with the piece itself with the camera um i've just been editing the video that you've been watching and uh all of yesterday afternoon's work and today's work, in, in fact all the pyrography basically, has um, not recorded. There was a little fault on the camera I've just found out and uh, so it's lost all those files. Hopefully I've got it fixed but uh, I can show you the finished thing anyway so uh, I'll grab the camera. Oh, there it is uh, owl and uh, I'm chuffed a bit with that I uh, could have done a lot more shading on it but I wanted to keep it as you can see the grain of the wood all the way through it uh, that's how I wanted to keep it as if the pictures like in the wood instead of on top of it I wanted you to see well I wanted everybody to see the um, the grain of the ash and I've done a bit of scorching around the edge which was a big mistake because it's warped as you can see <laughs> with the heat I'm not too bothered about that because I can stick it on the wall anyway um, but I've learned a lesson and that is next time I want to put a bit of colour around the edge I'll use my little airbrush 
instead of a blowtorch. But um, there you go, that's uh, the best bit of pyrography I've done so far. My third piece now. So I'm getting there now and I'm getting the hang of it. And the different tips you have to use. So I hope you like it as much as I do. And um, I'll see you soon for the next one, providing this camera holds out. So uh, bye for now everybody.